And we're underway. Rakia Jackson wins the tip. It's her first start since November 27th because Jordan Horston, who's one of the best players in the league as well so far this year, is not available. She's back at home in Knoxville. And Jackson takes an open three right out of the gate and hits it. Doesn't matter if she's coming off the bench or in the starting lineup. Yeah, not at all. She's coming out hot. I'm not surprised to see her take early shots like that. With Jordan Horston out for the Lady Balls, Rakia Jackson is certainly going to have to compensate more on offense. She's scoring over 24 points a game, so she's already doing her part. But we'll see tonight if she picks that up even more. And we see Caitlin Gilbert making just her seventh start of the season for Mizzou. Haley Troop splits the defense, gives it off Jayla Kelly. Nice pump fake. And gets her shot, makes it look easy. That's a great move there by Jayla Kelly. Thought she was going to go for the, the mid-range first to avoid some of that length down there from the Tennessee Vols, but great to see her aggressive with the Lady Tigers so far. And for Tennessee, they have finally figured out the starting lineup. It had been the same five out there, 11 games in a row, but with Horston's absence, you get Jackson out there, and if you're going to have an absence of somebody that big and important, well, how great to have somebody coming off the bench averaging over 18 points a game. Oh, this is a player in Makia Jackson that can certainly pick up the slack from missing Jordan Horston. Jordan Walker, the Grant student, their third year of Tennessee to inbound. Play such a major role. Elbow jumper is no good. That was the first look at Caroline Strickland. And for Mizzou, they had a really good start last time out. That was a week ago today at South Carolina, the number one team in the country. Played them really close for 10 minutes, but it's just so hard. You really need, I know it's trite and cliche to say, but you got to put together a full 40 minutes when you're taking on the game count. You really do. And this is a similar situation, I think, for the Missouri Tigers, where they are facing a team that the matchups just don't align well with this Missouri team, especially from a size perspective. So the Tigers, of course, are going to have to play well for all four quarters. Somebody you played under in your time here in Columbia. She's trying to right the ship here. It's a three-game losing streak. We should mention, though, two of those against two undefeated teams in LSU and South Carolina. Lauren Hansett's first shot. That was a tough contest there on the air ball. Another look for Jackson. And nothing but now. Third in the SEC at scoring. She's got 22 points at least in five of her last seven. Help defense there. Caitlin Gilbert almost had an open look. It's that Haley Troop traversing right through the defense and gets the pier drop floater. Great patience there by Haley Troop. You can see driving in the lane. She had three post players sitting there waiting for her on defense, but she uses her eye fakes, her patience. She has great pace, great poise, and feel for the game. Although Mizzou, great experience last Sunday going against one of the best remodeling teams in the country. It's South Carolina's Caitlin Gilbert starts today 0 for 2. Yeah, Max, you mentioned Missouri's ability to shoot the three and their ability to win big games when they make the three that game versus South Carolina. They were able to really stay in it the first quarter because of their ability to knock down threes early. This is a Missouri team that usually when we see that they're struggling from the three, it is tough to pull out wins, especially on another against a team that has so much more size. Ripplin gets the bucket there. Tess Darby shooting over 40% from three overall this season. She's really Tennessee's go-to three-point shooter, but she's got great size on her as well. She can score on all three levels, but the three-point shot really is where she can become, become deadly for defenders. Another step back jumper, no good for Frank. Jayla Kelly gets the bucket and the foul. I love to see Jayla Kelly so confident and aggressive right now early on in this game. And right after that offensive rebound and putback, Coach Kelly Harper goes to Jillian Holligshen off the bench, who comes in at six foot five. Tennessee by three, four and a half minutes in. No patience this time down the court for the Lady Balls. Jackson deep two from right inside the three-point line. So automatic for Jackson. Be pesky, be annoying. You know, when you're the, the smaller team, a lot of times, you've got to find ways to make yourself big. And when the Tigers are down in the paint, getting rebounds and crashing the boards, they're just going to have to be aggressive, be pesky. Their guards are going to have to get in there and just annoy the Tennessee Vols post players and just get in there and do what they absolutely can, whether that be forcing jump balls, tipping balls out of bounds, whatever they can do on defense. So Mizzou has four offensive rebounds already in the first quarter. They had four last time out on Sunday against South Carolina. All the way to the hook for the easy two. That's Jasmine Franklin, four years with the Lady Bears. Now she plays a role here for Tennessee off the bench and plays it mighty well and very efficient. Yeah, Jasmine Franklin's a player that Coach Harper's obviously been very familiar with. 
Uh, she came from Missouri State as the coach Harper, and she told us Jasmine Franklin is a player who came into the SEC a little bit nervous about the size she would be going up against, but she has really found her way, as you can see, and made herself comfortable among the SEC post players. And a chance to extend it to double figures. It's a great up. finish here. Just, just simple basketball. Great pass here, great finish. Shows great control, even gets pushed from behind a little bit, but still able to finish the basket. That free throw stroke from Jazz Franklin. Open look for Haley Troop straight away off the mark. Great fight for the rebound from Frank. And much needed for the Tigers. They were outscored second chance points. 29 to 3 against South Carolina, but a big put back after the missed shot. 15th all-time in scoring here for Mizzou. They need to string together some stops, though. Tennessee 7 of 10 from the floor here early on, and there's a steal. Avery Crockett, who had just checked into the game, one of the two freshmen, gives way to the other one, and Judd, who sticks the triple. Here come the Tigers. That was a perfect example of defense turning into offense. That was perfect execution by the Tigers down on the defensive end. Ashton Judd was getting buried by Tennessee Post player, and you had Missouri guards coming in to swarm, force that turnover, able to shoot, hit the three on the other end. Troop finds some space, kicks it in the corner. Can Judd get another one? No, she can't. Mizzou's gotten a lot of good looks here early on. They have gotten a lot of good looks. Tennessee really is a team that, you know, is really trying to improve their defense as of late. But you can kind of see they're packed into the paint quite a bit. They're a team that wants to block shots and alter shots at the rim. Knowing Missouri can shoot the three ball well, they've been able to get good looks, open threes. They're not guarding that three ball super hard. They're putting up 20-plus points on second chance opportunities. Even if you're playing great defense and you get to stop the first time, it is hard. Just really, really hard matchups. So much size for Tennessee, and then you got Hollingshed stepping out at six foot five, turning and facing and hitting that deep jumper. Frank trying to go to work again, instead skips it into the corner. Haley Troop, another good look from three. He just can't get him to fall here early. Just one to seven. Yeah, just really good looks. You can see Tennessee, they're doing well on the defensive rotations when it comes to the drive, but they're leaving shooters open on the three, and that's what Missouri wants to see. They want to see that all day long open threes, but they've got to knock them down. Another assist for win off the bench, and another deep two for Hollingshed. Great pickup for Coach Harper and the Lady Vols and Hollingshed, a legitimate all of 6'5 player who has a really nice stroke and can really score anywhere from the basket all the way out to, to 15, 17 foot. Former McDonald's All-American. Frank is fouled by Chance Franklin. And she'll go back to the free throw line. This feels like in this first quarter and in the first quarter on Sunday against the Gamecocks, Mizzou just expends so much energy trying to get open with their off-ball screening. And they're always passing, they're always cutting. And that takes a lot of energy and a lot of effort. With the short bench that Missouri has, it's the first quarter. Oftentimes you see players already starting to get a little bit winded, maybe even picking up fouls here and there. Powell gets all the way to the hoop. Tough shot, though, is way off the mark. And that's how this opening 10 minutes will come to an end. A great shooting first quarter. I should say going to South Bend to potentially play Notre Dame as a two seed in a second round matchup. What a matchup, a tough draw that would be for the Irish in a round of 32 contest. Yeah, no kidding. Tennessee definitely a better team than a, a seven seed. You know, we talked a little bit earlier about how that just brings so much energy when you make those defensive plays like that. Look inside, Jayla Kelly with the left hand. Gets it to go. Great job there by Jayla Kelly making the move quickly. If she would have taken a little, any more time, that could have been a block shot. You know, she's got to notice that she has a size disadvantage, so she's got to make her moves quick. She's got to make them quick, make them confusing, get the defender off, ba off balance a little bit, and it was just a great example of her doing that right there against Holland Chip. Hanson from the free throw line. She just hasn't gotten going so far. Great offensive rebound and ends up with Kelly. Open look for Hanson. And he hits her first shot. That's what offensive rebounding can do for you and your team. That could have been a lost possession. The Lady Vols are keeping Caroline Stripling down in the paint. She is not leaving the paint to guard Jayla Kelly, so there's always someone waiting to deter the shot from Missouri in the paint. She'll pull up any chance she gets. Pretty much a half court if she's open. Kelly, another offensive rebound. Going to take it herself and gets the friendly roll. Certainly didn't expect Missouri to be finding so much success on the offensive boards this afternoon, but it really is the reason that they're in the game right now. They've gotten plenty of good looks 
from the three. Not knocking a ton of them down so far, but these offensive rebounds kept them in the game. Shot clock at 10. Look at the disjointed possession here from Mizzou. Clocky, the freshman, trying to drive the baseline. That caught by Striplin, but able to finish on the reversal. Great. Crafty, shifty move there by Avery Cronkey, using her quickness as an advantage, working that baseline. Bucket left wide open. Tennessee is shooting 59% to Mizzou's 35 right now. Bucket's got an early seven. There's so much depth on the bench of this Vols team on defense and on offense. They have scoring pretty much everywhere. And then you get this one game against a Big 12 opponent. Really kind of splits up the conference slate well. That's her first attempt from three. She would have knocked that one down. The credit there would have had to go to Jayla Kelly. Just the ability to recognize that she has Haley Frank trailing behind her. She can just set that little in screen right there. Haley Frank would have knocked that down. Jayla Kelly almost an assist. As Franklin can't get it to go, but right back for the stick back is Tess Darby. Who's on the board for the first time today. And had a point of emphasis on rebounding on both sides of the floor this week in practice for Mizzou. Not surprising after... Their game in South Carolina, giving up 29 offensive rebounds. Now, the Tennessee Lady Vols, they play their best when they also rebound the ball. All of their losses have come from games that the rebounding margin was close to even. And so the Vols know that they have to come out and rebound well, as they've been doing late. And the Tigers, clearly a point of emphasis this week, like you said. Turn and face to the main jumper for Caroline Striplin, who's having quite the afternoon so far. She's got eight points. That leads the way for all Lady Vols. Missouri trying to cut into this eight-point deficit. Nice pocket pass inside to True. Pounding defense with Tess Darby. Haley Frank from the elbow. Shot clock, game clock, about 12-second differential. Three from the corner. And Mizzou controls. Is Kroenke going to look to push? The freshman always fearless. Extra pass, but a wise move there from the Notre Dame transfer, Caitlin Gilbert, to get it back up top. And now they have numbers. Gilbert hesitation on the lane through. That was Passat, actually, the former McDonald's All-American from last year. Got a hand in there to poke it away. Struggled to get the ball in. Jayla Kelly's open at the free throw line, but going to slow it down again. Mizzou holding for that last shot. Kelly goes to work. Second chance, no good, and a shot clock violation. Stop defense from the Lady Vols to end the half. Great defensive stand. Walker into the front court. Got to get it up. Didn't get it off in time. Almost hit it. Well, also staying out of foul trouble and continuing to just stay scrappy on defense. That's another piece that I think really helped them out. These guards are staying scrappy. They're staying aggressive. And it's two slightly different looking sides from what you'd normally expect. As Jordan Horston did not start today. She did not travel with the team. She's out with an illness. As Haley Frank exactly what the doctor ordered to start the second half. It's a great little set play there. Some screening action, getting Haley Frank open on a little tight cut to the basket. Great way to get her involved. And she's being guarded hard I don't, out on the three. Really, over the last two months, they've won 10 of their last 11 third quarters, averaging almost 25 points per third quarter over that stretch. Jayla Kelly inside. Courtesy Haley Truth, just a great pass there. You see, she's so fluid in her ability to facilitate. Oftentimes, you don't even notice what she's doing because it's so smooth and it's so quiet. But she just does a great job of scanning the floor and knowing where her players are based on the play that's being run. Wide open, Haley Frank in the corner, and it's a one-point game. Players get hot from threes, so that's a great sign to see Haley Frank, the team's best shooter by far, come and knock one down early. And Rakia Jackson, three for three in the first four minutes, has not attempted a shot since, and that rolls around and out for Tess Darby. Chance for the lead here for Mizzou. 7-2 start here to the third quarter. Bronke trying to drive on one of the best players in the SEC at Jackson. Frank to give him the lead, and she hits it! That was a deep one. That is exactly what the Tigers needed. It's loud in here, and they are lit. They are hyped up. They are feeling confident. I think everybody in the building knows that she's got to be more involved. And here she is down low, and she's 4-4, perfect from the field. But that's her first shot in almost 20 minutes. Group hasn't really gotten it going so far today. Caitlin Gilbert, shot clock winding down, gets the reverse layup. Caitlin Gilbert needs that. It's a great drive there. That's what she does best. 
she finds an open lane. She's so quick and athletic, has great feel for the game. She's a veteran player. She's picked up some early fouls, not going too smooth for her. So it's a good good thing for the Lady Tigers to get her rolling, make her confident. Howling Shed gets another jumper to go. And now Gilbert into the open court, another bucket. And Mizzou up by two. Caitlin Gilbert, as well as finding those open lanes in the half court, she's so good in the open court. Mizzou looks locked in on defense right now, and Troop gets a steal. A two-on-one with Crocky. And she lays it off at the last second for the easy deuce. Biggest lead of the afternoon for Mizzou. Averaging over 24 points a game in SEC season, so I wouldn't be surprised if the Lady Vols try to get her more involved and she just doesn't try to take over this game and take more shots. I think it's a combination of asserting herself on her own and the Lady Vols and Coach Harper putting in her position to get easy. Jordan Walker's turned at 24 in a couple of weeks on February 7th. Played three years at Western Michigan. Now in year three at Tennessee, she got her Masters last May. Three-point lead for Mizzou. And Frank got stuck, hounding defense there from Hollingshire. Troops got to go and gets a clean pass to the bucket. Cut to the basket and find the open player, and they did a great job there. Haley, Haley Troop able to get to the bucket, and Tennessee was in a little bit of a disadvantageous defensive situation. Jasmine Powell with some airspace around and out. Hanson had great position and it's going to be an over-the-back foul on Tess Darby. That's the only way you can get it done is box out old traditional, get a butt in the gut, make contact. Great take there by Haley True. You can see no defensive players put the Lady Balls in the paint. The rotations were off and great job of her by recognizing that. How about Lauren Hanson with that box out at five foot eight? against a six foot one player and had the good position. Yep. It'll, it'll do it. You gotta use your body, use your team in order to rebound. Frank turns and faces. That's just too easy over the much shorter Jasmine Powell. Seven point advantage. At 17 points now for Haley Frank. Jackson, no good. And the putback right there for Jillian Hollingshed. That's a tough position there for the Tigers. Hanson really trying to work it inside to Frank and throws it away. Walker up the floor. Quickly inside to Howling Shen and it's going to stay right here. Actually kind of get out of the way, make him fall a little bit. Great heady, heady player, Lauren Hanson, just so gamey, high basketball IQ. And inside for Howling Shen, goes to work with the spin move short. Frank with a loose ball. I think they're going to foul here on Haley Frank. Jayla Kelly over the scorer's table. Set to check in the next whistle. Got Kroenke in the air. And Tess Darby, who's been money from deep here in SEC play. That was a tough shot, and she connected. It was a great job by Tess Darby of being patient and seeing that Avery Kroenke's trying to run her off the three. Able to knock it down. Haley Frank can't answer. And now Tennessee, a chance to tie or take the lead. Less than two minutes left here in the third quarter. Hanging and getting the bucket and the foul, Rakia Jackson. Great job there by Tess Darby of reading the defense, able to come down and knock it down. Rakia Jackson just so strong and so lengthy there. Caitlin Gilbert, good defense, but just could not hold off. Rakia Jackson is just so good down in that paint area. Just her ability to get in the air and hang in the air. She just got great hang time. Just such an athlete. Can't complete the three-point play. Walker's right there. But a foul on the floor. Looks like on Jayla Kelly. Stay on the free throw line. If you're the Lady Balls, you want to get the Tigers in foul trouble. They were able to avoid that. Chance to give Tennessee back the lead. And she does with the first at 15 and 4 Alabama, who've won three straight. That should be a good one. Coverage begins at 7 Eastern, 6 Central. She's now got eight rebounds to go with those ten points. Kroenke, too strong, but Kelly's there again. Stripped away. What a play for Jasmine Powell. Crowd wanted a foul, and Robin pinched in. It's just apoplectic on the sideline. 
So a technical foul will send Rakia Jackson to the free throw line. Where she is now 0 for 2 today. Yeah, this might not be a bad thing, especially with one of those free throws being missed by Rakia Jackson. Intensity being shown by coach. That's seven fouls and one technical foul here in the third quarter for Mizzou. 9-0 run. Scoring ground of 240 for Mizzou and another foul. For a bench, you've got players like Mama Dembele and Sarah Rose Smith. They haven't taken the warm-ups off yet. Definitely a, a tough situation to be in. 11-0 run as Jasmine Powell connects. Well, they have responded so well just about every time the last two months to adversity. Eight wins in a row. Trail by seven, now lead by four. Kelly doubled in the paint, gets rid of it. Cronky at the buzzer, and it's too strong. Or a lot of that has to do with the fact that they have struggled on the boards, relatively speaking. Also not up with their assists that they normally have every game, their ability to share the ball, get good shots, clean looks. Both of those lacking a little bit today tells the story for the Lady Balls. And three seconds in the lane. So much work off the ball from Frank, from Kroenke, from Judd. They're looking inside for Jayla Kelly. Defense comes to help. And what a pocket pass as she slips it to Avery Kroenke, who gets the bucket and the foul. Okay, there's been at least two or three Tennessee de defenders there just swarming, and Avery Kroenke recognizes that. Backdoor pass. She sees the wide open lane, able to get the end one with a little bump. Through a tight window. Dropping dimes out here, Jayla Kelly. And it's a one point game. And they get another stop on this end. Powell off the screen for Franklin. How much going? Very patient trip down the floor as Powell drives, stops, pops, and hits it off the window. Frank from the right wing, and we are tied. Way too much space for Haley Frank. The Vols are trying to get through most of their screens. Franklin's got position down low. Walker drives and loses it. A chance to regain the lead. The last led with 2.10 left in the third quarter. Frank driving on Paul. Gets the double. Lays it off. Kelly's there. And Mazou's in front. Seven minutes left. Gilbert and Junt do have four fouls for Mizzou. And what a timely shot by Sarah Puckett to put Tennessee back in front by one. Back and forth we go. That shot is so smooth from the sophomore. SEC all freshman team last year. Frank gets a screen, gets to the free throw line, cut off. Drops it down, Jayla Kelly, can she finish again? It's the 17th meeting between these two sides. Tennessee has won the last five. Mizzou's only beaten the Lady Balls three times. Inside the bucket, turns face. And Tennessee back in front. Bucket has been just pure from pretty much every spot on the floor. That's a beautiful just turnaround jump shot on a player who's so much shorter. Her sophomore, she just really looks comfortable. She's got a variety of moves, variety of go-tos. Hanson all the way to the cup. A great screen there for Kelly. Neither team able to extend any kind of a lead here in the fourth quarter. Only four minutes left. It's going by quick. Haven't had many whistles. Tuck it, can she hit again? Left it short on the front of the rim. Kicked around at a jump ball. And it'll go to the home team. You know, this is a game that, you know, they're playing a team that is on paper not as good as them. And so they don't want to drop this game for their chances in March, just like Missouri actually needs really to win this game to help their chances in March. Tennessee, who ran the gauntlet early, they have six losses, all six of those losses to teams currently ranked inside the top 16. And a great time out there by Robin Pinchon as Haley Frank had got stuck. She had gotten doubled. Tennessee defenders chasing a screen, maybe have a quick slip to the basket by a post player or a tight curl to the basket. Hanson trying to get some space. Guarded by Jordan Walker. Comes off the screen, gives it right back. Haley Frank, and she hits again. Frank's got 23. Her fourth three, and 
Mizzou leads by four. What are you doing winning time? And Haley Frank has been incredible here in the second half and in the fourth quarter. Tennessee is not making it hard enough for her, quite frankly. That last possession, any type of screening action like that where you're getting confused, you have to know where Haley Frank is at all times and stay glued to her hip. Bronke gets the rebound. She gets hounded by Tennessee, but able to get rid of it. And now does Mizzou look to maybe slow it down a little bit on this set. Leading by four, 250 to go. And it's in the hands of the freshman, Avery Crocky. Hanson, a two-man game with Haley Frank again. This time she takes it herself around and out. Powell skied to pluck that out of the air. See on that possession there, the Tigers, all five of them sprinted back on defense. No offensive rebounds there. Whoever wins this game is going to be the team that wins the rebounding battle for the remaining two and a half minutes. And whoever knocks down their free throws. Nikia Jackson goes to work. Can't hit. Jazz Franklin keeps it alive. Almost walked with it. Shot clock reset to 20. Eighth offensive rebound for Tennessee. What a pass over to Franklin with the right hand too strong. Bounces around. Puckett has it. Stripped away by Hanson. But they're going to say that Hanson hit it and then it hit the baseline out of bounds. Now granted, they, they average almost 17 a game. See here, it's tied up a little bit. Avery Kroenke gets in possession of it. Can't see the baseline from our view, but maybe stepped out. That must have been the foot that was out. There was no foul call. That's a Jayla Kelly foul. Tennessee needs a bucket. And here they go to Rakia Jackson. Average is over 18 a game, third in the SEC in scoring. They're trying to get. Jackson inside, but another foul on Jayla Kelly. She can't believe it. That's going to be her fourth. She's got three fouls in, in crunch time right here. And if this is a game that, you know, there's a good chance it can go into overtime. You've got three players who are playing really well right now with four fouls. They've got to, to the best of their ability, just play strong, solid defense without foul. Jasmine Franklin cuts the deficit in half. The veteran transfer from Missouri State. Mizzou is trying their absolute best to keep that ball out of the lane. A couple of fouls and then an easy bucket. Tigers lead by two. Less than 90 seconds to go. Frank, and she's got a new season high. A five-point lead after Haley Frank hits again. She's got a game high, 26. Kept alive. What a play that was by from Powell. And a charge is called. And then again, just invaluable presence on defense with her ability to take offensive fouls like that. That's the heart and soul of this team. That's the fourth charge she has drawn to death. But a turnover. Jordan Walker right there for the easy layup. Tennessee within three. That was a dangerous pass across the court to Gilbert. An early shot. They don't use much clock. But a rebound for Troop, and she's fouled. That costly 90-foot turnover is something they certainly want to avoid the last minute or so of this game. So if they can come and get a foul out of it, they can get a two or a three. I think they have the ability to do it. The Tigers will have to rebound. Everybody's standing here in Mizzou Arena. Rakia Jackson, almost a turnover, and a bank three from Sarah Puckett. We're tied. Timeout for Coach Pitch. Seemingly, they'll have the opportunity to win this game at the horn. All eyes on Haley Frank. Zoo going to eat some clock. Haley Troop, the 24-year-old grad student with the basketball. Comes off the screen. The defense for Puckett. Shot clock at five, forces one up, and Puckett's right there. Loose ball and a foul. Troop is whistled for it. It's Mizzou's fourth. 10.2 left, Tennessee a chance to win it. It's a good thing that the Tigers went in the bonus there. They put the Lady Balls on the line right now. If we get the ball, call timeout. We have two to work with. 
Inbound to Jordan Walker. We're under 10 to go. Tied at 65. Jasmine Powell. Inside they go to Rakia Jackson at the buzzer. She gets the and one. Still 1.1 to go, but Tennessee back in front. Wow, maybe the most emphatic bucket, maybe the biggest play of the night from Rakia Jackson. Just so happens to be an and one with one second left to put them up by two. I mean, just not surprised to see her taking the shot here. That if Avery Cronk is going to foul her, you got to foul her hard. You've got to foul her. Make sure she doesn't make the basket at the very least. This is just by design. Get her down low. If she's got a clean look down there, I mean, chances are she makes it or you foul. It's her second and one. She's only one of three from the free throw line. It makes it a three-point game. And they do have two timeouts to the Tigers. So they're going to have to find something quick. There's no time to pass it. So timeout advances the ball. Missouri needing a three to tie it. 1.1 to go. Missouri trying to end a three-game losing streak. Tennessee trying to win their ninth in a row. Hands it for the tie, and she left it short. Tennessee escapes Columbia with a victory. Their ninth.